long riders and welcome back to everything fly fishing if you're new here make sure you click that red button down below you see it's a little play button click that so you can subscribe because you don't want to miss any of our awesome tying videos fishing videos instruction videos so you can get catch more fish when you're on the water learn how to tie more flies so you're prepared for your next time on the water and make sure you like and comment on these video I love comments Today's class, we're going to teach you how to tie a March Brown Emerger. Now this is a March Brown Emerger, but it can be used for different flies that merge on the surface. So we're going to tie you one. It's so realistic like a, of a pattern, you don't want to miss it. And like I said in the beginning, don't miss this. Make sure you subscribe because I still got 89% of my views come from non-subscribers. So I got to get you to subscribe so you can get more out of your time on the water. So let's go to the tying vise, and we'll talk about this new space, our new recording studio, and everything at the end of this video, and more about this amazing emerger pattern. So let's get to the vise. Okay, now we're done. Let's take a closer look at this fly. What do you think? Let's. Right now, let's go take a closer look at it. Now we're going to start this thread on the flat part of the hook. And uh, I don't know where to get these hooks. This says the size 16 because the hook band is pretty small. But the actual hook length is more like a size 10. But I don't know where to get these hooks with the flat part. All the caddis hooks now are just all curved. There's no flat part to them. So if you don't know where to get these hooks, you tell me. So we're going to use this wing that we bought two years ago at Lancaster's show. I love the color of these wings. And I cannot find uh, floatable yarn or anything in this color. But you could use a, a white yarn for this, floatable yarn. Or you could even use calf body hair. Whatever you decide to make this pedestal out. What you're going to do is make a pedestal because you're going to tie a parachute. Now you can tie this with the wing facing forward. So your cutoff material is in the back. So you're going to wrap up around the wing. Then you're going to put some thread wraps in front of that wing. To get to stand up. And then you're going to go up the wing. Start making the pedestal. And then there's a little ball of burnt that keeps these wings together. Burnt material. Or you'd have, if you had yarn, you'd have a whole bunch of material sitting, laying back behind you. It's poly yarn. What it basically is floatable yarn of any kind works. And then when you cut it off, your bulk will be back there, and that can help you build up the body. So you want to go in front of it to get to stand up and up it to start creating a pedestal to tie your hackle to. When you're putting these thread wraps in front of the wing material, you want to make sure you get as close to that wing material as you can. And with a bunch of thread wraps, don't put, I mean, don't overkill it. Don't make it too bulky, but you want to get that wing and once you let go of the wing, it should stand straight up. Now you want to start wrapping up that wing to form a base to put the hackle on. So I'd wrap it up at least about a quarter of an inch. I'd go up, maybe a little bit past. And then I head cement the whole thing. When you, if you head cement the pedestal where you're wrapping the hackle, it'll make it really stiff and real easy to hackle. If you don't, it kind of gets bendy. Your thread wraps kind of want to push up the wing sometimes. So I do all this and head cement it. 
make a stiff pedestal to work with. Now you want to take your hook in the vise and move it so that you can get to the very bend of the hook and you're going to ignore what you just did. Run the thread back to the back where the bend starts and we're going to start tying this fly. We're going to now take three or four pheasant tail fibers, tie them in as the tail and we're going to make them, you can take a size 14 hook because that's about what it'll be. About a size 14 hook and uh, measure the tails. We're going to take black thread. Now this don't matter. You're just going to use it for a rib. So you could use any sewing thread. And this is really thick thread. So I'm going to double it up even to make it thicker. And uh, so what you're going to use is a rib. Now you're going to tie this in. And then when you're done tying in, you're going to run your thread all the way back to where your tail starts. So that you can dub it. Now we're going to take light brown ice dubbing, and that's what we're going to use in the back. We're using ice dubbing because when these are hatching, there's all kinds of gas bubbles, and this ice dubbing will represent them gas bubbles coming off in the light. and the sh So that's why we're using that for, for the tail section. Usually we only use it for the thorax. But in this case, we're going to use it for the, the tail section too. Now take notice of all these hairs sticking out of the back of this fly. The reason why we want these sticking out is because this thing's emerging, all kinds of things are happening. Shucks are coming off and new pieces are emerging and old pieces are falling. So you want all this hair sticking around to represent all the new things that are happening. Tails popping out and all kinds of stuff. Now you're going to rib this. I like to take the two lines and twist them together so they make them thinner, not so wide. And you're just going to rib this all the way up to where you stop that dubbing. Now, once again, you're going to turn your hook in the vise so you get to the surface is up, so you can work easier. And I think some of you guys know what's going on here. We're basically tying a nymph with the floatable top part. As you see, let's let's keep going. And now we're going to take again lively legs, the purple flake lively legs. I know a lot of you guys are like, why does he keep taking these videos? We just leave the lively legs out. Just put a bunch of hackle there, pick it out, make it look like legs if you don't want to use the lively legs. I'm using the lively legs. I'm sharing this with you because these lively legs work really, really well. And they make this pattern look so realistic. So you tie them legs in. You want to put a wrap in right in front of this front set of legs the ones facing forward you want to put a wrap right in front of them now go up that piece very that rubber tab very far then some behind that legs back to the next set of legs just a little bit back behind that set of legs and that's how you tie these legs in
Now, without cutting your string, you want to pull up on that back set of legs. You can cut that back to set of legs off. You're not going to only use two sets, the front two sets. So you can pull up on that, stretch it. That'll make the just stretch out on it and cut it off. Now make it as close to them thread wraps as you can, and then grab the front tab, pull up on it, and stretch it and cut it off, and that'll make the front one as close as you can. Now for the thorax area, we're going to use this black Helgramite ice dubbing. And so it was black, but it's got like different shades of green and stuff. Or ice part, the, the flashy parts like the greenish, bluish. So we're going to use that for the thorax area. And now this brown and black combo will represent a lot of nips and a lot of emergers. Now you want to ha get a hackle, a black hackle. I know that usually your March Browns are brown and grizzly, but we want this, we think a black would represent the hatching of the fly more because it's kind of just a black and grayish, but we're going to use the black and then we can use this for many of different emergers uh, patterns. So we're going to use the black because we think that would be represent the things that are hatching out better. And we're going to use a size 14 uh, feather. And we're going to tie that in right behind the eyelet. And then we're going to run it back up to the pedestal. And then all the way, we're going to run our thread all the way to the top of that pedestal and back down. And then you could re-head cement it. Or you could wait till now to head cement it. And head cement that and let that sit. Now we're going to add some black, super fine dry fly dubbing. And this is a black, but it's got a little shine to it, helping to represent the emergence or the gas bubbles building up or whatever. So we add a little shine, but this is dry fly, super fine dry fly dubbing. Now you're going to wrap the hackle up to the eyelet and then take your thread and stop, stop at the base of the pedestal. Or where you're going to, the thing sticking up, your wing sticking up. You're going to wrap your thread, or your hackle, I'm sorry, around that pedestal you had made. And if you had cemented it, it would be real easy. It would be nice and stiff. You're going to wrap that around, I don't know, about four, five wraps maybe. I'm going to wrap that around. And when you get to the bottom, you're going to pull the hackle down and put one thread wrap right around the base of that thing, right around the base to hold that hackle. You're going to wrap one or two thread wraps around that. Now I'm going to show you a thing. This is super glue, and we're going to show you a way not to have to use a whip finish on this. Um, it's something I tried last year, and I field tested it, and these babies are solid. They don't come on ravel. So what you can do is you can take a little bit of super glue, and you're going to stick it right there, the thread that you're about to wrap onto the thing. You don't want to go too far down. I don't even go about, uh, I don't know, an inch or two, and then you're going to take that thread and go back around that same pattern you just did right at the base going over top the hackle trapping the hackle down and then you're gonna pull on it you're gonna pull on it pretty hard hold on the hook with the other hand and pull on the thread with the other hand now you can see in this one I pulled so hard I broke it but that's what you kinda wanna do you wanna pull hard and hold it and hold it and hold it for a couple seconds and then when you let go the head cement or the super glue might sorry the super glue will start to harden and that'll keep them threads from unraveling. Raveling. That's what you usually use a whip finisher for. And trust me, it works.
cut your thread off, cut your hack off, and we're done. Now you can go back and pick out the thorax area of this fly. You know we didn't have no shell back. That's because that's where the wing would be popping out. So we don't put that part in. And this will float right in the surface with the nymph hanging under the water with the parachute and everything there above the water. And it'll make it look like it merge right in the surface film. And these are going to be deadly. Wait till you see us fish these. These are going to be deadly. So well, let's take a closer look at the fly. So sad about going to school Oh boy, you need a girl, you fool You sing and dance and be the king At the ball come in Hit the badass books again Turn to poetry and find a friend Maybe you'll conjure up Darren And write that old rolling stone away Hey, welcome back. I hope you liked that tying video. That is a really cool March Brown pattern. Really realistic with them lively legs. And it is really gonna work. Well, I can't wait to get out in the water when these flies start emerging and fish this pattern. I guarantee you're gonna wanna watch fishing videos to watch them. So when you can check out the patterns that we tied so far and the action they produce on the water and we start catching fish with all the different merger patterns we tied, nymphs we tied. So, that is a really cool, um, that comes out with the red bud tree. It blooms with the, when the red bud tree blooms. That's when these ha well, ha start hatching. And um, we have them on um, May 12th. And uh, you can also tie the, uh, Red quill, which comes out a little earlier, which is the same. It's uh, everything to this point will be the same. The only thing different is the adult. I, uh, the red quill is an early March brown pattern that has. Well, anyway, we'll get onto that when we tie the adults. And uh, so you want to tie these up. So now we have the nymph covered. We have the emerger pattern, and next will be the adult. So um, you can check out that next Wednesday. Um, we will be bringing these tying patterns to you every Wednesday. I'm not sure about time. Most likely the time will be, it will be posted to be around 5 o'clock. Every Wednesday you can come and you can see a new tying video. Um, that I guarantee you. Uh, we will make sure that you get a video every Wednesday from now on. That will be our new posting schedule. And we'll have fishing videos thrown in there, live streams thrown in about, but you guarantee you every Wednesday we will be doing a tying video. Unless I fall down and hurt myself or anything crazy like that, but we guarantee you every Wednesday from now on until winter, you will get to see a tying video every Wednesday. So, make sure you're here every Wednesday to watch this one. Make sure you're here next Wednesday to see the adult. Um, and then we'll start on another pattern. Go back and check out our old videos. We have uh, patterns that we've tied so far from midges to Quill Gordons to, and we do the, uh, we do the nymph, we do the uh, merger, and we also do the adult, if there's an emerger and adult. And go back and make sure you check out the Quill Gordon, like uh, something we didn't know is the Quill Gordon actually emerges under the surface, and we'll talk about that. You have to go watch our old video, go check that out. And uh, so yeah, this comes off with the uh, red bud tree when the red bud trees uh, blooming. So does this flies hatching, and that will be happening really soon. It's been really cold here in Pennsylvania. I don't know how your state is. It has been crazy cold, and today again they're calling for snow, and uh, that's just crazy um, that they're doing that. That it's still that cold. So. Hopefully the next time we get to see you uh, next Wednesday, it'll start to be warm and you can start fishing these uh, dry fly patterns. Uh, I love dry fly fishing. I mean, I love nymph fishing too, but you have to admit, nothing's as exciting as the dry fly fishing. So, make sure you go back and watch our videos tying, tie up, and uh, 
And always, thank you for watching our videos. Make sure you comment, give it a thumbs up, and uh, keep on tying and keep on fishing. Get time on the water. Take your family with you. Just have a good time. And uh, make sure you check out all of their videos. Make sure you check out all the videos that we have. You can check out playlists and uh, videos for just for you. Um, so, you all have a good day. Thank you for watching our videos. Later.